In this video we're going to take a look at step 6 of the Cheat Engine built-in tutorial which looks at pointers. In the previous video we saw how we can use the code finder to handle changing locations but as this tutorial tells us that method alone makes it difficult to find the address and set values we want and that's where pointers come in. So in this video we'll see how we can manually identify pointers using the built-in tutorial and in the next video we'll see how we can automate the process by generating pointer maps and we'll do that against a real game to demonstrate the techniques. If you saw the previous video, I did cover some of the basics of computer memory and assembly and addresses and pointers and things like that. So I'll be reiterating some of those concepts in this video, but I'm essentially just going to follow through this tutorial as we go. So it tells us that we've got two buttons at the bottom. One is going to change the value, which is this one here, change value. It's currently at 100. And the other is going to change the value and the location of the value. It tells us we don't really need to know assembly and it also tells us to go ahead and find the address of the value to begin with. So we can do that. We need to make sure we're connected to the tutorial. So we'll double click that. And our first scan is going to be for 100. Again, we might need to change this, but we'll just try it as four bytes to begin with. And we'll do first scan. We get a lot of results. So we want to try and change the value now and see which one changes. And we actually see this one changes, but I could just double click that, but maybe there's multiple which change. So I'm going to do 702 and next scan, and then we can see that we've got this one. We can change the value again, double click it. So this is currently 913. It was previously 702 and it was originally 100. So it looks like our value. I'll change that to be called value. And I'll also change the color just to make it a bit more noticeable. And that's our value. So if we change this, each time we change it, we can see the values change in there. Next, it tells us to find out what accesses this address. So we can right click it. In the previous video, we went to what writes this address. But in this case, we can do accesses. In fact, let's do writes to begin with. So we'll attach the debugger and we can then change the value again. And each time we do that, the count is going to go up. So every time we're changing the value, it's performing this operation. So it's moving the value that's in the EAX to the location pointed to by the RDX register. So it's not moving the value from the EAX register to the RDX. It's moving the value from the EAX to this address, which is in the RDX, which is 14DFAE0. And if we have a look at our value, that's the address that we have here as well. So that's the pointer. These square brackets denote that fact. So you can see over here, it's mentioned in the tutorial as well. And we need to make sure that we actually find a pointer. So we need to make sure it does have those square brackets. It may also have an offset occasionally. So, well, not occasionally, quite often it'll have an offset. So rather than saying RDX, it might say RDX plus eight or plus 16 or something like that. And in that case, we'll need to take that offset into account as we trace back through the pointer or the pointers. But we'll save that for a future video. I don't think it'll come up in this tutorial. And just to demonstrate then, so our RAX currently has 296, so we could open up, let's go and open up our calculator in the programmer mode into hex, and that is 296 equals, uh, which is 662 in decimal. Let me change this again, change value, 57. Okay, I need to, let me find out what writes this address, change value. Here we now have RAX is 107, so we'll go back here in hex, we'll paste that in, that is 263. So you can see here this value, 263, is exactly what's being held in the RAX. And whenever it's being moved, it's being moved from, it says EAX here just because it's dealing with a 32-bit register, but it's fine that it's actually 64-bit. It's just using the lower 32 bits because all these are just zeros anyway, they're not necessary. And it's moving that value then, 263, into this location, which is the pointer. All right, hopefully that made sense. Let me also just show that sometimes we'll actually need a different address. We can do find out what accesses this address. We can go change value again, and each time now we get four different addresses. So we can go through these. This one is the RAX. So you can see it's moving the value is this is the address on the other side so this is the pointer and it's being moved into the EAX register and we can go and have a look at what that's holding in fact in this case let's go down to this one so we've got our RDX 
and the RDX has the same value in it, we can, so this isn't going to work for us. Although it's showing the pointer, this 1AC isn't going to be a memory address that we can search for. We can also go to more information to bring up this window, which will actually tell us what it thinks the pointer is. You can see here the value of the pointer needed to find this address is probably, and then that's the same address that we have here in the RDX. So let's close that down. It's the RDX we're going to be looking for, and you can see here that it tells us to add address manually. So first of all, what we do is let's take this, take a copy of this address. I'm going to close that down. We're going to go new scan. I'm going to change this to hex and change it to 8 bytes because we're dealing with a 64-bit process this time, 64-bit application. And I'm going to do first scan. It comes up with this result and actually this is a base address which you can see indicated by the fact that it's in green. It's also showing us the actual process name as well. So we could double click this and this is essentially our address. Now we can take a copy of this and we'll say OK on that. Let us go and let's add a new address manually. There's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to paste in this. Oh, no, I'm not going to paste it in there. I'm going to click pointer first of all. And then we'll make sure it's pasted in here. And you can see the offset is currently zero, which is fine for us because in this case we had that RDX in brackets. There was no plus eight or plus whatever or multiply. You can have various values in there to indicate the offset. The offset for us was zero. So we can essentially just say OK. And now we have this pointer, which is, you can see it's actually got a P and it's pointing to this address. And it means that whenever we go and change pointer now, let's do change pointer. And if we go change value, notice that the value that we originally had is no longer updated whenever we change value. And the reason being that the address is incorrect. So you can see here the address now for the pointer is 014DFBA0. And that's a different address to the one we had originally. So if we were in a real game and we rebooted it or we died or something, some other event happened, those points at that point would likely be reset. But now that we know how to find that pointer, we can basically close down the game, reopen it again, and we know that this pointer will or should still be pointing to the correct value. And Sometimes it's a little bit more complex than that, which is why the pointer maps will come in. We have this option, generate pointer map and pointer scan for this address. So we'll be looking at those shortly. But what does it ask us to do now? I think we need to change this to 5000. So what we want to do is freeze the address. Okay, back to the tutorial. We'll have a look at this in a second, but back to the tutorial. We've got the pointer. Now we want to freeze it and then we want to change the pointer, so we're going to change that to 5000 and hopefully if we now go to, oh yeah, change pointer click change pointer and that's 5000 and we've got the next button enabled now so we've completed this stage of the tutorial. So we missed out some of the text from the tutorial here, let's see what was covered in it. It tells us that we can provide the address of the pointer with the offset and in this case we took this address here so we took a copy of this and we could basically put that in as the pointer but we can also get the actual address. You can see here what this is pointing to, the absolute address and we could also provide that. Both are fine. There's a lot of different ways to do things in Cheat Engine so don't worry if your method is slightly different to ones that you see in videos or tutorials elsewhere and also then the offset. So we didn't need an offset in this case, but if we had seen RDX plus 12, we would have needed to set up a offset here to 12. You can see this is in the hex. And as we go through, as we deal with multi-level pointers, which we'll see in a future tutorial, we can add more of these offsets and these will we'll have to calculate the offsets depending on the instructions that we're using. Apart from that, it tells us that we can have more complicated instructions. So in this example, we have an offset and it's actually EAX times 2 plus EDX plus this hex value which we would need to go and manually calculate in order to track the pointers unless we use something like the pointer maps. Okay, I know I said we would look at generating pointer maps in the next video and we will do that against a real game because I think it's good practice but this video is quite short at the moment so let's also take a look at it in this tutorial. So I'm going to delete these addresses from our address window I'm going to go and set this back to its initial 
value so four bytes is the value type and let us let's go change value I'm also going to change pointer actually just make so, sure this is all fresh and our initial value is 96 so we'll do first scan we'll change the value now we've got a 712 next okay so there's only one address so we're going to grab that and this is our value one and I'm going to right click this and go to generate pointer map it's going to ask us where we want to save this so I'll say scan one and that's it very quick if it was a bigger game or there was more to capture that might take a little bit of time and we've saved that one so now we're going to do a second one so I'm going to go change pointer and you should see that this will now whenever we go change value that's not updating because we've got rid of that pointer and let us scan for the new value so first scan is going to be for 63 and then we'll do change value now it's 381 we can see it right here so this is our value 2 and then we can right click this go to generate pointer map we'll go scan 2 save it again all nice and quick and now I'm going to right click on the first one I'm going to go pointer scan for this address and it's going to ask us some options we don't need to worry about too many of these to begin with in some games you might need to modify these values down here but for now we'll just do use saved pointer map and we're going to take in that scan one data so that's the first scan against the first value and then we're going to tick this box compare results with other saved pointer maps I'm going to open up the second scan and we want to make sure this is set to the correct value as well although I can't actually see the value now oh it's well it's up here so C00 was our second one so you can see here value 2 oh it does actually tell us equals so that was the name that I gave it value 2 so that's all good hopefully now if we just go OK and we want to save this to results that's going to run through it might take a bit of time again depending particularly on the game and what we're trying to scan but this is going to come back with a list of possible pointers and this is important because even if we identify the correct pointer it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be reliable so we want to try and find a reliable one that every time we boot the game every time we die it's always going to be the same and in this case we've actually only got one back which is awesome we know that's the correct one then so that is our pointer I've also just double clicked that so you can see it's added the result and this is the location that's pointing to normally you'll see a lot of addresses here and you'll also see a lot of offsets as well and we would need to then narrow it down so if we saw a thousand addresses here and there were all different offsets we'd be interested in the offset with a zero because remember we didn't have to provide an offset whenever we did this manually so if we didn't do it manually at all we would just go back we'd go right click and find out what access the address we'd have a look at what the offset is and then we'd use that to narrow down this option and in fact you can actually do this rescan memory where we could go in and we could actually provide the offset and that would remove all of the addresses that don't have the correct offset at the end in this case we don't need to do that it's a very simple example so now if we go change pointer notice that this is keeping the value so every time we do that it's got the correct value that we see down here and it means that if we were to if this was a real game we, we were to reboot it we'd be able to load this pointer and essentially just start playing with the value right at the beginning so whether that's our ammo or our points or our health or something like that it means we've got quick and easy access to modify it hopefully that all made sense if it didn't don't worry we will be going over these topics more and more as we go through the series and if you missed the previous videos you can go back and check those out in the next video as I've mentioned we'll be going through generating a pointer map on a real game just so we can see how it actually applies when it comes to modifying values it can be a little bit abstract dealing with simple tutorials like this so I think just practical demonstrations against single player games with no multiplayer we're not doing anything online we're not doing anything regarding in-app purchases or anything like that we're purely trying out these techniques and demonstrating them for our own knowledge and learning process which is of course very important anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below thanks Thank you.